message in terms of we have corpse fortnight, but the cooperative message doesn't get out there. We're still very much like an enclosed group, a private club. Um, we need to uh, get the cooperative message out there so more and more people see it as an alternative. And I think this is particularly, this, I'm sorry, this is a personal comment. I think that's particularly pertinent to the young people nowadays. They are are looking for an alternative and the university sector is possibly not giving them and also um, there needs to be more principle six activity in terms of cooperation between cooperatives um, to actually build that momentum going forward and get cooperation at all levels through the um, education system both informal and formal does anybody have, have anything to add to that from group one no, I think that's we, a really. We did say we needed to unite more as a movement and not be in uh, our silos as we have in the past. And I was explaining about our new chief exec at Corps UK, who I believe um, will be listening and is sounding out. So, um, you know, let's see if we can all work together more cohesively. And to recognise and to recognise significant differences between education systems across the UK in doing so. Yeah, thank you. Did you have a final point, Rebecca, or not? Can we move on? Only that it was very much, um, we talked about scale a lot. So we talked about how that there's need to be to involve like big organisations like Cooperatives UK, like Rose, like, you know, the new education minister. But that also that can be quite intimidating to people who are new to COP. And it would be really good to start doing the smaller pieces and the, the small sparks that really, really start these conversations, too. So it's very much kind of a small, big, top down, bottom up approach to the whole idea of spreading that message through education, through promotion and visibility and through through principle six. Thanks. That's brilliant. Thank you, Rebecca. And just quickly to answer Jenny, and I don't think I'm breaking any secrets. We had our college trustees meeting this morning and we were absolutely delighted to welcome Rose uh, to have a proper meeting with us all. And we had a great, uh, a great, a great discussion. So uh, in terms of that much more close work and collaborative working, it was, a, it was a, a really great meeting. Thank you. Group two, Tanya, you're in charge. And I think Pat Connolly. Hello, Pat. You were, you were doing the reporting, nice to see you both. Yeah, Pat um, has, get, has taken notes. I think I was put in the wrong group, but uh, we, oh. both worked, we both work well together. So thanks. Of course. <laughs> thanks. So have you got your three bullets? Pat has, yes. Okay. Uh, well, similar to the other others, so we, we I suppose what was the education was was strong. I think a lot of that was actually kind of build 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 them locally, and, and they'll come and connecting to the schools. And therefore, we had Dan McCallum in our group, and you know he gave us many examples of the way that they've that they're expanding what they're doing. I mean, last year um, installed about four 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 megawatts, I think he said on on uh, on on in their in their in their. Um, School roofs program, but also other other community buildings um, in South Wales. Um, the the issue, though, about there's fantastic examples like that, um, but of course the the dominant form is you know of, of of renewable energy is controlled by multinationals and supported by generous amounts of capital. So the issue of where do we get the capital, and how can we advance mutual trading came up. I think the work that you know Mid Counties Co-op Energy. Um, is a great example of actually supporting the sector, supporting the growth of the sector, um, but also um, the ethics uh, platform for investing, uh, for people to invest in projects um, is a very key resource. But still the issue of power and how do we aggregate power to uh, influence public policy and politics uh, came up and therefore taking uh, a lot of people supporting, I think um, the presentation by Sal and Kerry about the work that they're doing in Northwest Wales. And how do we come together therefore came up, the issue of solidarity principle six, um, the ways that we can actually use perhaps, um, Niall um, uh, from the, um, e the London Co-op Federation in East London talked about the, the development of a secondary co-op that they've been developing to actually pay trade union rates uh, and actually kind of be able to do mutual trading um, by actually the, the support for the, 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 the works program coming through the secondary co-op. So that's an inspiring example of what, what, what they're doing to break out of this race to the bottom in terms of um, 
in terms of precarious jobs. Uh, uh, so uh, th there are several points there, I think, that were made. Have, have, have I missed anything important? Others? Well, I think you've covered it all. Thank you very much. Okay. That was really great. Thank you. And thanks for that group. And I have to say, you know, although I'm on a bound to talk about Robert Owen and education, uh, when it comes to cooperation, I'm also on a bound to talk about Robert Owen and trade unions and some of the union co-op developments that we're trying to progress uh, with Alex and Pat and a couple of others on the call. Uh, but thank you for that really helpful um, resume. And the next group, please, um, was, uh, I think it was, report the reporting was Deb, Wasncraft and um, Phil's group, I understand. Uh, yeah, hi, hi. Um, same as everybody else so far. Uh, education was top of the top of the bill. Uh, we've had somebody in the group who's just done a master's in economics. Um, so obviously the importance of uh, teaching of economics uh, because they're our business leaders of the future. Um, the cooperative values need to be passed to the next generation of decision makers and entrepreneurship in, in its wider sense, and not just the Richard Branch, Branson style, which apparently is, is um, sort of muted as, as, as great examples uh, currently. Also education through energy co-ops. Uh, examples were given of um, uh, community wind farms down, down in South Wales, relationships they have with the local schools, etc. cetera. The importance of getting the next generation involved. Um, and the importance of energy conservation and the principle, principles of cooperation tied <coughs> into that as well. Second point um, leading on for that, community energy. Um, there's the big issue at the moment that energy co-ops can't actually buy their own energy. They have to sell it to the big, uh, the big six companies. There is a local energy act going through at the moment. And hopefully once, you know, when that is passed, that will open the door um, to people to be able to be able to buy their, their own energy. Uh, there was an example given down um, uh, where 30 flats are participating in a, in a, in a project where it will actually cut the cost of, of um, you know, energy being provided to social, uh, social housing. Leading on nicely to our third point of co-op housing, uh, example given of Merthyr Valley Homes that got 3,000 tenants. Uh, it's a hybrid co-op. Um, it's working with the whole estate, working with the housing association um, and the tenants. And then uh, leading on to the, you know, the, the need for, for cooperative housing generally. Uh, and there are great examples in Wales. And uh, why, why have we got those uh, examples? It's about um, the re relationships that we've got um, through the center, the relationships that our decision makers have got with it, with the, the sort of um, the cooperative sector as well. It's also a bit about um, how do we convert existing businesses to uh, cooperatives? And it's not about building the support system because that is already there through, through the Wales Co-op Center. Um, it's about how we get in, into the structures of policy and government, and how to raise, a, raise awareness of the cooperative model. Um, Sarah gave some great examples um, in Malaysia, uh, where they're great examples of cooperative values um, right from the early age, uh, sort of taught, taught in school. So um, that's, that's, I think, where, where, we need to, where we need to start. Mm. Um, so from that group, is there anything else that I've, I've missed that you'd like to add? No comment. Thank you. Sounds like, sounds like you've done a great job there. Yeah, you. very good job there. Thank <laughs> you. I mean, it's quite hard, hard, isn't it, getting it distilled? <laughs> we've got a big group, so well done. Thank you. Um, right, our next group, I facilitated and Glenn uh, heroically took notes. Great conversation, great discussion. We made sure everybody had a, something to say. Um, but Glenn, would you like to report yeah. back from group four, please? Thanks, Silla. Again, a really good conversation, really full and packed. We needed every second of every minute. 
um, yeah. and everybody had uh, the chance to say something. But what we didn't have was time to actually hone in. Definitely, we were all agreeing on our three points. So what we did agree was if other people wanted to jump in, I'm going to report back generally on three areas of the conversation that we spent quite a lot of time on. Um, on the first one, it, it does link in with education. We're the same as, um, as other um, people who fed back so far, but specifically around how we educate, I suppose, and one around the, the power of stories. Because if we need to engage new generations in the, in uh, Owen's work of the past. We need stories that are relevant in terms of to do that, and we need to use language that is relevant. So maybe not the language that we as cooperators, and most of us in this room today are, you know, are long-term cooperators, and that language wouldn't be understood by some of the new generation. And, you know, Silla used the word collective sometimes in, with some of the work we're doing around the sort of more union co-op um, uh, work in South Wales. So stories, and the, the one story from today that came uh, loud and clear was, you know, in terms of the, the use of schools and energy and giving shares back to schools, that's a story of cooperation and collaboration that we need more of to educate people. The second point, again, which, which does allow for education and cooperative, cooperative education, is how Owen created and enabled the facilities to have space to be educated. And you know, if we think, think of all the, um, the community resources that have been lost over the years, where are we going to do that education? And Nick made the point, even, even now, in terms of the, the last bastion, really, of, of the pub, that we will lose more pubs. So where is our community spaces? Where will we have the democratic debate? Where will we encourage the philosophy of cooperation and, and, and get the new generation of Owenites? So we need really to reinvigorate our community space and our community hubs um, to develop that localism agenda to do that. So stories and the, the cooperative hubs locally to enable us to do that. I think the third point, which is a wide ranging point, is legislation and the inequality of legislation. If you look at mutual legislation compared to the more uh, classical economic theory and companies legislation, you know, is it by accident or design that we've had so many numerous updates of company legislation and very, very few updates of mutual legislation? And how do we get the enabling environment to make it as easy to set up a mutual structure as it is to set up a company structure? Um, so they were the sort of three core areas and there were lots of conversations around those. Another area which we spent a lot of time on was branding. Uh, and again, as cooperators, we, we, we review that you know, quite a lot and we, you know, how we brand ourselves as well. But I'm happy for other uh, members of our cooperation uh, group to, to jump in if I've missed anything. Thank you, Salah. Thank you, Glenn. Um, I can't see any of the group. I think you've covered it pretty, pretty coherently and co you know, it looked good to me, sounded good to me. Uh, group five, hi Chris, and Selwyn uh, was your reporter back in group five. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, Thank lot, you. A lot of what we said um, has already been covered. Uh, three quick points, uh, starting from something which is quite common, that a, a lack of uh, knowledge, a lack of awareness, a lack of consciousness um, about uh, the whole cooperative uh, ethos and enterprise. Um, but more importantly, what do we do about that? Education, um, a lot about uh, education has been a way forward. People have already touched on that. Uh, one thing we could add is the idea of some sort of a community university. Um, such a thing does exist in uh, the Basque country with Montreal, um, but something along those lines. The second point is a, a really practical point, um, and it's not only an idea, but also a practice. Of next year on May the 14th, uh, we in Cumbi Brofestino will be celebrating uh, Robert Owen Day. Um, Avion um, in the Wrexham area will also be celebrating Robert Owen Day. Um, we don't need to ask anybody to do this, we just do it. Um, and uh, we can spread that idea um, of a Robert Owen Day, which is an easy way of actually raising consciousness about Robert Owen and the whole set of ideas that are related to it. And the third point, which I don't think anybody else has touched, is um, the need for a level playing field in our dealings with government, particularly government grants. In Wales, we 
like to think that we've got a slightly more progressive government than in other parts of the UK. Um, but even so, um, there's a lot that can be done in Wales um, to provide a level playing field for uh, grant applications um, when uh, cooperatives are seeking grants, so that they're not discriminated against, uh, as is the current situation. I think that's about it. I, I don't know if that's does justice to the rest of the group. It was chaired, uh, really well chaired uh, by Chris, um, and everybody had a chance to uh, speak. Okay. Let's just add a, a cooperative dragon's den. Oh, yeah. That sounds nice. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed. And uh, just one minute, really, for me to wrap up. I think, I, I mean, you've all just said extraordinary things, and I think you've really built on the great presentations we got from those five speakers. But what you've also done, of course, is build on so many of Owen's original ideas. It's a very knowledgeable and enthusiastic uh, group here, clearly. But but I also just want to take a slight, just back to something Gillian said, I, I think was one speaker, that really it's quite shocking that we're still having to deal with some of the great crises uh, that Owen himself uh, was looking at when he was trying to uh, reform and address the massive inequalities, the early terrors of industrialization and what that was doing to people and place. Uh, and you know that, that that has continued. And as we move into the fourth industrial revolution, uh, that is not gonna get any better, but there will be even further alienation and, and heaven knows what with the unknowable future of work. Um, but it's great to hear that, you know, it, education is so central to all of the things that people have been talking about and how we do it through storytelling, uh, how we actually do things differently in terms of our learning, how we bring communities and we collaborate and do things collectively, and that we actually are unafraid and have the courage of our convictions in terms of thinking about cooperative alternatives not just solutions but alternatives you know to the great crises of our time and to do those in very democratic and uh, critically thought through ways so thank you so much for a massive contribution um, I'd love us if we can save the chat there's so much richness in that chat It'd be fantastic to share that out and thank you very much indeed for racing through, but really producing some great, well thought through responses, really valuable knowledge making. So thanks very much indeed. Over to you, David.